only qualified personnel should service and install Napoleon appliances and accessories. See product manual for details. This video will demonstrate how to replace the rear burner supply tube on a Napoleon Prestige Pro gas grill. To perform this service, you will need gloves, safety glasses, a quarter inch drive wrench or socket, a 3 8 inch wrench, and an adjustable wrench. To begin, disconnect all power and fuel sources from the grill, so it can be safely serviced. Next, disconnect the regulator from the flex hose. To do this, use an adjustable wrench, and a 5 8 wrench, to loosen and remove the regulator. Once this is done, remove the cover plate surrounding the flex hose, so it can be easily removed later on. Turn your attention to the top left corner of the cabinet, where you will see the white Molex and control box. Disconnect the white Molex, the control box, and cabinet light, before pulling all the wires through the hole in the top left corner of the cabinet. Next, locate the side burner, and rear burner supply tubes. Carefully remove them both, using a wrench. Locate the two hand screws, which secure the control panel to the grill, and remove them using a quarter inch drive wrench, or socket. Lift the lid of the grill, and remove the cooking grids, and sear plates. This provides access to the burner tubes, which must be loosened slightly, using a quarter inch wrench or socket. Lift the control panel upwards, moving the burners as you lift, to free the valves from the burner tubes. Next, remove the back cover using a quarter inch drive wrench, or socket. The cover is located at the back of the grill, between the grill head, and the cabinet. Ensure the igniter block, and bracket, remain within the opening. Locate the rear burner supply tube, on the back left corner of the grill, and disconnect it, using a wrench. Move to the front of the grill, and lift the rear burner supply tube around the burner, and upwards, until it is vertical. Pull the supply tube outward, to remove it from the front of the grill. Locate the new supply tube, and identify the front end, with the longer bends. Place the rear end of the tube, through the cabinet, on the right side of the grill head. Place the front end above the burner when installing the supply tube, and move it around and under the burner, once the supply tube is through the grill. Move to the back of the grill, and reinstall the supply tube. Tighten it snug, turning it an additional half rotation, to ensure a good seal. Perform this step with caution, as over-tightening can damage the brass connector. Install the control panel back on the grill, putting the top of the panel on first. This allows you to place the valves into the burners with ease. Once correct placement is confirmed, resecure the burner tubes. Replace the sear plates. And install the cooking grids. Resecure the control panel to the grill, using the hand screws on either side of the panel. Then feed the wires back through the hole in the cabinet. Reconnect them to the control box. And plug in the cabinet light. Reinstall the side burner supply tube, and rear burner supply tube, to the manifold. Tighten them snug, with caution, as over-tightening can damage the brass connectors. Reinstall the cover plate around the flex hose, and reinstall the regulator. Tighten the regulator with two wrenches, being cautious not to over-tighten it. Once secure, ensure the flex hose is located in the clip, on the side of the cabinet. Take note of the two nuts, located underneath the rear burner, on the back of the grill. Remove both nuts using an adjustable wrench, to allow the rear burner to move freely. Move to the front of the grill, and reconnect the fuel and power supply. Then turn on the control box, to ensure all the lights are operational. Turn the fuel source on, and use a 50-50 mixture of water and dish soap to coat the main gas connection, and regulator connection, using a basting brush, or similar tool. When performing a leak test, look for bubbles forming at connections, indicating a gas leak, and tighten the connection if necessary. Once you confirm there are no leaks, apply the soap mixture to the rear burner supply tube, underneath the control panel, and have an assistant turn on the gas supply using the control knob, while you move to the back of the grill. Move the burner tube off of the orifice, before plugging it and applying the dish soap mixture. Have your assistant help you check for bubbles forming at the front box back connections, and tighten the supply tube as necessary. Once confirmed there are no leaks, turn off the control knob and replace the rear burner on the orifice. Inside the grill, replace the rear burner housing. There are two notches on the bottom, which line up underneath the rear burner's securing studs. Lifting the rear burner slightly, allows easy placement of the housing. 
Next, move to the back of the grill. Use an adjustable wrench to resecure the nuts, which hold the burner and housing in place. Turn your attention to the underside of the side burner. Remove the pin, located near the tip of the orifice, which supplies fuel to the side burner. Apply the dish soap mixture to the connection point of the 90 degree bend and plug the tip of the orifice. Apply the dish soap mixture to the opposite end of the supply tube, under the control panel, and turn on the control knob. Inspect the 90 degree bend for bubbles, and tighten if necessary. Once no leaks have been confirmed, turn off the control knob, and replace the 90 degree tip, and pin, on the side burner. Lastly, reinstall the back cover using a quarter inch drive wrench or socket. Start by reinstalling the rear igniter bracket, on the right side of the cover. The flanges on the bottom of the bracket, fit into the holes in the bottom of the back cover. Once in place, secure the bracket to the back cover. And secure the outer edges of the cover, to the grill, 